A massive thanks to Asdin for working his way through this one. It wasn't without its issues as we'll find out. Cassette Beasts is more than another monster collecting game. It's more of a homage to 80s pop culture, infused with pixelated visuals and unique mechanics. But will this become part of the greatest hits? Well, my name is Mark Walker. Thanks to the publisher for the review copy. Now, let's find out. Don't dare stop and stare again. Picture yourself on New Wirral, an enigmatic island abundant with incredible creatures that will leave you spellbound. You're not alone as you've been joined by others who have also been transported to this world without any knowledge of how to return home. Feels like a heavy night out. One such group of dauntless individuals use cassette tapes to morph into mighty warriors for battle. To discover your way back home, you must scour every inch of the island and capture monsters with your cassette tapes to obtain their unique abilities. The tale of people banding together to create a community and survive on this island is quite captivating, and the plethora of companions and monsters to help flesh this out really do add to the mystery of the island. Now, we've got a number of monster capture games to choose from on Switch, and all share distinctive mechanics throughout the gameplay. This one's no different in some regards, with the exception of a few tweaked improvements. Cassette Beasts is a game where you record monster forms on cassette tapes to transform them into them. This distinction, compared to other games in the genre, works really well. Your character will have an individual levelling up system separate from the beasts, and when one of your transformations is defeated, you'll be left vulnerable before selecting another monster, and this is distinguished by two separate health bars, one for the beast and the red one for the trainer. Now as you embark on your adventure, you'll find that other adventurers can join you on your journey and hopefully form strong bonds with you. By resting and recharging at campsites scattered throughout the world, these bonds can be strengthened, thereby increasing the effectiveness of your attack combinations and facilitating the creation of powerful fused monsters. As you'd expect, these can be discovered and defeated in the wild, revealing the creatures used in their creation. This unique mechanic encourages experimentation and adds an exciting dimension to the gameplay. The turn-based combat uses a chemistry system that allows players to use elemental types to inflict status changes on opponents. There are 15 types, although monsters do not necessarily adhere to their primary one. An example of this is when you're using a fire attack on a plastic monster that will then change its type to poison. Another example is the use of an air wall, which is an air type defensive move that can last longer if hit by a fire move. It might sound complex, but you start to get to grips with the synergies between them. There's so much depth to the the battle system which require the player to think outside the box. I found battling enjoyable and engaging, mainly thanks to these unorthodox mechanics and the fact that monsters can be seen and therefore avoided on the map. The move set of each monster tape can be personalised with more than 200 stickers. Stickers are essentially moves of a monster and can easily be swapped in and out with some elemental and thematic limitations. You can attain new stickers by levelling up your monster or exploring the game world. Different tiers of sticker are available ranging from common to uncommon and rare, a real flashback to many of our childhoods. Higher tier stickers can provide additional benefits. Your creatures can also be remastered after leveling up and attaining 5 stars. This is essentially the same as evolving them, and the great thing is that many monsters have diverging forms, which will entice players to capture a couple of the same and see what they turn into. The developers have even included the game's own version of shinies known as bootlegs. These will not only differ in colour from their standard counterparts, but can come in any of the 50 15 types as well. There are many quests to carry out, as well as side quests and companion ones. The game has some interesting puzzles, and you'll obtain a traversal move by battling a monster with that power. Eventually, you'll be able to glide, swim and dash. Additionally, you'll be able to play in co-op, but I didn't try that out before release. It's always nice to have it in there. For gameplay and controls then, it's a great game. It offers more than enough to keep monster collecting fans glued for a very long time. Unfortunately, the version played 1.2.0, and as you're about to find out, it was one of the worst performing games in a long time, which I'll elaborate on in the next section. The gameplay, when it runs properly, is solid and kept me powering through regardless of the issues, although there were many. Gameplay and controls at the moment, they score 17 out of 20. Now, we had the opportunity to review version 1.2.0 of the game, but please note that a patch may have been released by the time you watch this review. And wouldn't you just know it, the patch is out, so this section you're hearing right now has been added into the video. We're now up to version 1.3. something or other, and performance is certainly improved, but the stutters and the pauses that we'll speak about are still very much in the game. That being said, it has slightly increased the score of this section, because before it was filled with crashes 
crashes, we haven't been able to make it crash again, so that's one thing. Now back to the original audio. Regrettably, the game suffers from unstable frame rates that negatively impact the audio quality. Certain assets freeze for seconds at a time. These issues really sullied my time playing it, and it's pretty sad when a game as good as this comes out so half-baked. I really do need to emphasize that under all the abhorrent performance issues lies a truly beautiful and colorful game. It showcases a creative flair with imaginative monster designs and 3D environments boasting pixelated graphics that are visually appealing. The animations during battles, particularly transforming into monsters, evoke a delightful 80s era experience. The neon colors used throughout add to its retro appeal, and the use of a cassette player as the menu during battles is a really nice touch with its functional buttons, making it all the more engaging. The soundtrack and audio delivery are excellent, featuring vocal tracks during boss battles and instrumental versions afterwards, creating a dramatic tone that enhances the gameplay overall. However, the aforementioned issues with performance really tar the experience. They need fixing, and we'll add it to an all patched up video in the future. Right now, visuals and performance score 11 out of 20. Performance is also affecting that great sound, unfortunately. Right now, that scores 13 out of 20. This one's going to cost you £17.99 or your regional equivalent, and it requires one gigabyte to download. There's no mention of a physical, but hopefully we'll see one in the future. You can complete it in about 10 hours, but there is a lot of post-game content, as well as collecting and going back for things you missed. The price point is on par, but being in its current buggy state, value as it stands is 14 out of 20. Cassette Beasts is an exceptional game that breaks free from traditional genre mechanics and incorporates an impressive amount of artistic creativity. However, the current version utilized for this review may not be ideal for your backlog due to those issues. Even with this new patch that's released, it's not quite at the level I'd hoped it would be for when it released to you guys. It really needs more TLC, allowing it to receive the recognition and admiration it deserves, while further expanding its brand. it gets a switch up score of 72%. That has increased from 67% when we originally made this review, so you can just see how good the game is underneath an annoying buggy release. Thanks, Asdin, nice one. As we've gone back and altered our review, there's a chance it might be a little bit delayed, and it's worth checking if other reviews have come out, which version they're playing on, because it's unlikely that most people are going to go back and change the review once it's made. So again, a big thanks to Asdin for yeah going the extra mile with us so that the information you have is up to date. It's still not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was when he was initially reviewing it. My word. If you enjoy hearing about games after they're released, to see if they've improved, then do make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have a series called All Patched Up where we do exactly that. Go back and see if they've improved. On the channel, we always go back and revisit games once they're patched in our series All Patched Up. If you want to buy any games, make sure you go to switchup.gg where you can save a good percentage by collecting your switch up coins and then using those whenever you want to save a bit of money. A thanks to all of you, to our Patreons and to Asdin for the review and for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See you.